Fellow third world country redditors, what are some issues first world people never have to go through or think about? On to the trivial. Good, mobile data is cheap. Bad, you need 3 internet connections in your office to keep consistent access bandwidth. Sounds like Germany. Oh wait, you said it was cheap. NVM. Needing a visa to go literally anywhere. And I don't mean the type you get when you enter the country. I mean having to apply a month and a half in advance with your plane, hotel and insurance all booked and then hoping to god your visa doesn't get rejected. Wanting to go for a quick weekend trip across the border? Well you better had planned it months before. I grew up in a developing country but was a dual citizen with a US passport also, so I took for granted how easy it was to travel. Whenever my friends, who only had Namibian passports, would want to go on a trip, I always forgot how far in advance we would have to plan sometimes. I lived in the Dominican Republic on and off for 10 years. Florida the rest of the time. It's subtle things. Washing your canned groceries because the store has rats. Rushing to the one computer when you have internet a click send on the messages you've had typed out. And not letting your mouth stay open during a shower because drinking the tap water will ruin your day. Pouring your beers into a glass because they reuse the bottles and don't clean the outside. Using your car horn. In the states, it's like a big deal. In the doctor, it's a preferred form of communication. Oh it's raining. The traffic lights will break soon. Better get out of the work later. Lights break while inside the bus. Bus takes one hour to get out of some stupid junction. Everybody is using their horns to make things better. You decide to get out of the bus in the middle of the street and just walk for hours. Oh it's raining even more. The street will flood soon you just got out of that bus. You're knee deep in some very gross water. You see some poetry in the plastic bags floating away. Oh I hear some thunder. We'll be out of power soon. You just got home. You're searching for some candles when the transformer explodes somewhere in the neighborhood. Your cell phone battery is obviously low. Rain? Rain ruins your day. Sometimes I feel like a plastic bag. No pedestrian walk. I always envy people in the movie when they walk around in their city. It's almost impossible to walk around where I live. Random people just spread their things and start selling stuff on the street. Not to mention the traffic jam. It makes the air very dirty. Bribing and thinking ahead to avoid being in a situation where you have to bribe your way out. One particular case comes to mind with Angola. Police would stop you, ask for your driver license and held it until you bribed them. This could be a huge bribe or a really big inconvenience, particularly if you had to drive up and down the country. Some people instead just bought tickets that were to be handed over to the driver if the cops held onto your license so that they could tell the police when stopped that another officer has already took their license and keep it safe in their pocket. The details are a bit hazy, but this was some next level thinking that had to go on whenever they planned a trip. Have zero hope in justice. Justice is a matter of money here. Not only because it's expensive to enter a cause but because of the corruption within the system. When I went to an international school in Indonesia, a lot of the students were rich foreigners or children of diplomats so they did a lot of stupid stuff by buying off the local police. When my teacher was robbed she borrowed the help from local mafia because she knew the police would not help. You have to wake up as early as 3 or 2 even just not to be late to school or work. Because, 1. Overpopulation in the city causes problems to the ratio of passenger to public transport, plus add the congested traffic. 2. School is literally a mountain or two and a river away from home and you have to start walking non-stop by 3am to reach school at 7.30am. No joke and exaggeration. Dang a four and a half hour walk there. School all day or work. Then 4 hours back, just to do it again. Machete attacks, having to bribe cops, neighbors burning their garbage, in countryside areas, government propaganda even in schools, having to boil your water to drink it and it still isn't totally safe, overpriced imported goods, people, mostly children, falling off the back of pickup trucks cause there isn't much public transportation. This is what comes to mind after living 2 years in South America. Wondering if someone can read, there are a lot of people who are functionally illiterate, including sometimes people in uniform. Walking at night can be very hazardous because of the lack of lighting in the presence of open sewers, lack of safety codes, 
I see a lot of very bad wiring and shoddy construction. Sometimes I gave my suicid card or something similar to cops as I had no driver's license at the time. It was pretty easy with cops that couldn't read or took bribes when they could. A high ranking public figure might not get away from the justice system of a first world country for doing a heinous act. But in a third world country a high enough person could pretty much do anything in plain view of the public and have nothing happen to him. Or even re-elected as a government official by the public. That public whose ancestors put them in jail in the first place. This is in Philippines. Here in Venezuela if a malandra, word for thief plus killer plus pervert plus society trash, kills you it won't go to jail because is really a cop. Plot twist. Criminals have police credentials. However if you kill one of them in self defense you get 30 years in jail because you are a horrible person. Former in laws are from Venezuela. I visited once 10 years ago and I felt so unsafe I never went back. The daily 3 hour power outage. Use the microwave. Turn on the water heater. Use the hair dryer. All these. Before it happens. Because the electricity we get from the private generator is not enough to power them. And the issue is when it happens and you're in the elevator. Then you're stuck and gotta wait for someone to open up. Which could take some time. The global market gave us microwaves we can't even use properly. On judgment day, I will walk through the pearly gates waving the Zimbabwean flag so God will know I have suffered enough. I lived in Zim as a child, before Mugabe, beautiful beautiful place. So much hardship and difficulties, not before Mugabe, sorry I just didn't remember, he was just not as crazy. 1. Town vigilantes, in forms of mobs. 2. Incorrect instilled family values to the point of toxicity. 3. Losing your belongings with 0-10% chance of getting it back. 4. Minimum to none mental health care, especially in provinces. 5. Drug trade and drug busts every night. 6. Bribing any official under broad daylight. 7. Weekly implemented programs, health, environment, business. 8. Anti-militia private armies or rebels and them scouting the youth. 9. Trying to fit less than $60 for a family of 6 in a month. 10. Extreme traffic due to reckless drivers, roads getting rebuilt when they were just reconstructed 2 years ago, jaywalking and cars parking at the main road. 11. Frequent scheduled power outages that lasts for 8-12 hours. 12. Trash and stuff scattering around the street because it's too troublesome to throw in a garbage can. 13. Eating cats, dogs or pets when they see a carcass of it, not willingly killing them, more of they died due to natural causes. 14. Extremely slow internet. Whoa, reading the comments here really makes me measure that my situation isn't so bad. But still, there are some issues. 1. People driving in such a way that the cast of Fast and Furious would raise an eyebrow. 2. No sexual freedom until marriage. Being caught making out is a certified 3 months jail sentence. 3. Massive drug problems, especially in the coast. 4. Education is fricked, except in some sectors, like medicine and engineering, where it is very high quality. Culture is fricked, all types, and television is basically suffer prone and people screaming over each other. 5. Fearing that the troubles and war in neighboring countries will spill into yours. Especially the fear of your relatives working there becoming slaves. 6. Absurd pressure to marry, especially for women. But thankfully, the laws have changed, and the population is slowly following suit. 7. Tax fraud is rampant, especially for liberal jobs. 1. The twisty top water soda plastic bottle has a plastic film on the bottle cap that you have to pry open with your fingernails. Prevents fake drinks. 2. Traffic is pretty safe here, but occasionally I see a head-on collision in my sleepy residential neighborhood. How the frick did you guys manage this? 3. A 2-ton truck carrying a 5-ton load that poops out on every single lane uphill. 4. No big denomination bills. Having to carry thick wads of bills that do not fit in the wallet. 5. Not knowing if a cop is pulling you over, or just an innocent cope hitchhiking home after an honest day of work. 6. Every time I turn in traffic, a bunch of motorcycles moped make parallel turns on either side of my car. 7. Can't drink tap water, 
constant fear of running out of boiled filtered water in the fridge. Almost everyone is poor, so it doesn't take much for your friend, so, co-workers, strangers, etc to steal from you if they see an opportunity, and if you complain your things were stolen. First thing people think is that it was your fault for leaving things unattended or I was your fault for trusting the thief. Like it's socially acceptable to be a thief but trusting people is seen as a major character flaw. When I was in high school I, American, born, raised, and living in NY, had a foreign student stay with me from Yemen. He loved playing FIFA so we played a lot. I asked him if he ever played online with other people when he was at home. And he said that he couldn't because the Wi-Fi would cut out a few times a day so it was never worth starting a game because he would lose connection. I responded oh dang that sucks, is the Wi-Fi not that reliable over there and he said no the Wi-Fi is actually pretty good, except whenever bombs go off it cuts out. I was just like, oh. I probably would have reacted very similarly. Police is the most aggressive gang. Any encounter with the police will end up with an empty wallet or a quick escorted trip to the ATM. Got robbed in Mexico by police, at broad daylight in the middle of Mexico City downtown. As everyone said, bribing to get ahead in life, having money to get a good education, unlike the US where people can get student loans. No such thing exists in my country. You want a good education that focuses on conceptual learning rather than raw memorization? Pay up. Justice is mostly awarded to those who have power or money. A successful lawyer is not the one who wins cases but one who apart from winning cases makes them drag on for years especially cases of dispute etc. Boiling water before you can drink it, unless you are in a mountainous region where they have free flowing water springs etc. So much street food that is enough to overwhelm you, at least towards South Asia, the wealth gap being a real problem. The rich will act like you are beneath them and treat those who are poor worse than crap. Road sign signals are more like suggestions than rules to follow. People who have spent generations being homeless. Some people crap on the USA, and perhaps rightfully so, but compared to most, we don't have it so bad. Power failure, not the normal power failure that might occur when there is big disaster. Imagine a situation where one sees three straight months without power as normal and maybe three straight days of uninterrupted power supply as something fishy or something must be wrong somewhere. That's actually pretty bad even for third world countries. I lived in a third world country as a young child. Every day was work to survive. If you're living in poverty in a third world country, your entire day is about survival. But searching for food was the biggest part of my day. And food doesn't mean what it means in the US. Finding food meant eating tree bark, a cricket, or on a really lucky day being able to work for steel corn. Hunger was our driving motivator. After hunger is water, and then the elements. Winter equals death. In the winter, most of your time is spent trying to keep warm. It was the most exhausting, helpless feeling I've ever experienced. I've lived in first world countries since I was a teenager. Adoption rocks. Punishments for children. While teaching in Sri Lanka I walked past a row of young boys in shorts kneeling on the concrete floor with their hands crossed behind their heads. I asked the headmaster how long they had been there and he said only one hour. The youngest boys were about 5 years old, they were shaking and had tears streaming down their faces. I'd only been there a few months at this point and lots of things were overwhelming, but this was incredibly shocking. I never sent any children to the headmaster after that, no matter how poorly they behaved for me. Dang, even in India this is common, although I never thought of it as a punishment as it was hardly more than a short period of discomfort. I moved from South Africa to Canada. Things are just more controlled and predictable here. It's like opposite ends of the lawful chaotic axis from DND. People in the first world expect everything to work and lose their minds over something like the train being 5 minutes late. One time I went to catch a train back home and after waiting an hour we found out it had been set on fire as part of a protest. A protest about the failing public transport system lol. Similarly people get so heated about politicians. The whole left versus right thing seems so petty and tribal tbh. For me I'm just loving the well maintained infrastructure, public services and being able to walk my dog in the park at night. After dealing with rolling blackouts, water shortages, 
corrupt officials and lack of personal safety I feel like I've learned to just roll with the punches and have a laugh about all the little bothers in life. It's like our emotional range stretches to fit our lived experience and some of the folk in the first world could do with some stretching. Oh man where do I even begin? 1. Infrastructure. Better roads. Sidewalks that people actually respect and not drive freaking motorcycles on it, and are not filled with random vendors. 2. Public transport. The accessibility is amazing and the trains and buses are generally on time. TBF the metro in my city is unmatched and it shoots on the tube lol. But the buses and trains are always almost as a rule late. People just assume that if it's supposed to arrive by 7.30 it actually means 8 or 8.30. 3. Accessibility in general. Cheap easily available microwave food and vending machines. 4. Special areas for specific purpose like residential and commercial and school districts. Here it's a giant mismosh. 5. People can. Just. Drink tap water. They don't have special water filters. 6. Safety. People in Europe leave their doors unlocked or can walk around after 7. Oh how I wish. For your information it is not normal to have your door unlocked in Europe. Sure you can find examples but not normal. You know what I feel bad about second world countries. You haven't heard of them, but they are always watching, watching and waiting. Ah yes, the Meg Griffins of the world stage. Not exactly third world, Eastern Europe, but pretty bad in this regard. Our free healthcare is a joke. Awful conditions, run down hospitals and really underpaid staff. If you wanted decent treatment, you have to pay the doctors and the nurses on the side. Some of them even have their own rate and will let you know before taking you up on your treatment. There were attempts by the government discouraging this behavior, but nothing changed. Rightfully so, a doctor should make well over the average wage, not just around it. I was at a meeting where pretty much everyone except me was from a first world country. In the meeting, we were asked to write down, from a series of options, what are the biggest issues on the planet right now. All the people in the meeting answered housing and or education. I was the only one that answered hunger and the lack of potable water. I had a couple of people in the meeting saying things like the government provides that for them. But what about a house for getting that? Just because we were in a country where those were provided by the government, doesn't mean it's true all over the world. Don't get drinks with ice. Where I lived we had to boil all of our water for drinking or everyday use. Sometimes I would gamble with just brushing my teeth with tap water if I was feeling dangerous. If you go to restaurants, if you order a water you'll get boiled. Still hot, water. But most of the time, the ice is not boiled first. Just frozen because people don't think about it and normally only foreigners order it. And every time it rained, the sewers would get backed up and flood the streets. Having to apply for a visa 1-2 months before you travel, and the visa requirements are so ridiculous. Letter from your employer, your banking slip, proof of accommodation, visa fee that could be as high as 150 US dollars. People not obeying traffic rules. Traffic lights are more about adding to the beauty of our city. Yep, I have an Indian passport and currently in the hassle of applying for a Schengen. The Dang Embassy requires a letter and a passport photocopy of my friend who booked the accommodation just because my Dang name isn't on there. It feels like you're extremely unwelcome. My friend has a Pakistani passport and it's 10 times worse. World's largest statue. Bribing. Congested roads. Unclean streets. Potholes on roads. Women safety. Cost system, more tax, less income, thus high cost of living, labor exploitation, water scarcity, moral policing, policemen behaving like gangsters, insecure people, religious extremism, power outage, fluctuating voltage, less jobs. You get to experience the real survival of the fittest, be exceptionally good at what you do for a living. So, basically people try hard to survive, living is expensive comma world's largest statue. I think I've played that map. Foreigners getting treated more fairly than the people who live in it. Foreigners seriously have a higher pedestal than the normal people and they even sometimes get free passes to crap that should be available to the average person. Trust equals own people. Trust equals equals people who don't even live in the country. I've noticed that too. I'm French and 
Several times, I've noticed that I was treated better because I was a foreigner or I was allowed to do things that random people couldn't. It always makes me feel uncomfortable. Whereas, in other rich countries, I've always been treated as an average person. The lack of opportunities. We live in the dreams can never be true country. Can't even have decent education or health care. But everything is to sell if you have the right numbers. 100% pay to win and it sucks. Having to hide your phone and stuff whenever you leave the house. Never pulling it out on the street. Hold your crap tight and walk fast. I recently learned that some people don't bother locking their car doors unless they're going through a particularly rough area. Blew my mind. In no particular order these are my top 5. Epileptic power supply. Religious fanatics. Very bad roads. Irretrievably dumb leaders. Illiteracy. After reading a lot of comments on here, I'm pretty much on board with most of it. I live in Madagascar, where the elections just finished up. At this point, I'm just hoping the power passes on peacefully, even if the president that has been elected is unfit to be in office. I think something hasn't been mentioned is how third world countries have to rely a lot on foreign powers to provide the basics for their own citizens. Food, water, shelter. It tends to make the government lazy and gives them the excuse to use money for menial things that end up benefiting them and the upper class. I don't live there, Kosovo, but in the city I was born it's girls being kidnapped, just in a full crowd on the streets, taken by their hair and thrown in a truck. My uncle saw this happen two times, random shootings, my younger brother saw this from the balcony, a man running up to a car and shooting the driver in his knees. Also, my mom's niece son was shot to death because he was a waiter and told a customer that that table is reserved. Entering a taxi, on numerous occasions there were people found cut in pieces who entered a taxi without personally knowing the driver. Wild dogs biting children to death, the government coming to your shop with men and guns, demanding more than 50% of the profit. My mom's uncle had a blooming water production business and went broke because of this. These are just some I now thought of. Wow I had a friend that lives in Kosovo. From what my friend told me, that was more associated with Albania and Serbia, where gangs and crime is rampant. I figured Kosovo being its own territory would be more free from that and yay had its share of dangers, but dang. Waiting for everything. Bribing to make things go faster. Don't drink the water. Everything fun is illegal but doing something illegal is part of the fun. But I can only give you the view of someone who merely visited some countries and tried to help. The things we westerners don't think about is the importance of the family and that your wishes and dreams are less important than the position of your family. That's because your family provides for you and you provide for your family. You don't go to school because your family needs you on the land. You don't get to marry the one you want but the one that is most suitable to be added to your family. Homosexuality does not exist. Don't say something like that. Do you want us to get into trouble? The wife of your father's boss thinks you wear the wrong clothes. Change them. You are insulting our family. Your cousin wants to start a shop. Loan him money. Etc. It is the social system that we have forgotten I guess. Political dynasties. Seeing the same surnames on the ballots every election. Candidates fresh out of school. And without any experience. Winning simply because their parents or grandparents were incumbent officials. The president's daughter and son are the mayor and vice mayor of the same city. Politics is a family business. I feel like nobody mentioned how expensive everything is. Want a new car? Cheapest car costs $10,000. Has no AC and no alarm power locks. Want a new video game? Nice. That'll cost you $1,000 to get started. And even if that doesn't sound bad, the salaries are so low compared to first world countries. Minimum wage is about $240 a month. 97% of the population makes less than $25,000 a year. How can you afford a car on 3x the minimum wage? When people from first world countries treat you like savages and think you need to be saved, the other regular issues have already been brought up. Oh my colleague once had a foreigner tell her she was racist because he asked her if she was. A word which is the name of a race. And she said no. And told him her race. He thought he had used the word used for our nationality. So he went off on her for bringing up race. Ugh. 
Not from there but from where my uncle lives having your children be dragged away and eaten by jaguars is something that happens. 1. Having to always have your bag on the front of you to prevent pickpocketing. 2. Not being able to use your phone on the streets in case of a snatcher. 3. Not having a flushing toilet. 4. Not having toilet paper in public bathrooms, including shopping centers. 5. When building a house having to set broken glass on top of the walls to prevent robbers. 6. Everywhere is fitted with security guards that don't really do their job properly. 7. The constant smell of sewage wherever you walk. 8. No road rules. 9. Seeing tourists getting harassed while on the streets. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.